guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, we are going to be doing a thrift to treasure. So if you watched my last video, you'll know that I went out thrifting. Uh, definitely something I love to do, but I am taking items from that thrift haul and we are gonna be transforming them in today's video. So if that is something you're interested in, stick around and see what I do. For project one, these two little metal snails that I recently thrifted, I knew the minute that I picked them that I was not giving these up. They were going to end up in my garden. So I was trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to flip them to make them look updated and beautiful. I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to test out my blending skills again with the DIY paint. In a previous video, I demonstrated how I blended three different colors on this beautiful little box. So let's test it now on these snails. I started with Petal Pusher by DIY, and this is a really pretty blue, and I wanted to paint both of the bases this color. If you noticed, I also pulled those spirals out. There's these tiny little springs and when I thrifted them, they were like totally smooshed down and I pulled those back just so that I could get in and paint that whole base. Now DIY paint can be applied to virtually any surface and stick and not have any problem with chipping or peeling once it is sealed and cured. So once I let I get this painted blue, I am going to let it dry very thoroughly and then we're going to go back in and start the blending. Next up though, I am painting the Spirals Mint Chip. It's a really pretty uh, green and I thought uh, because I want to make this real vibrant and bright, uh, because I'm going to be painting the base, um, I'm going to make the base of the snail a little bit darker. I thought that the mint chip would make the base totally pop. Next, I don't show this, but that green body of the snail, I went in with fire starter and I painted the whole body of this little snail fighter, fire starter and it is a beautiful orange. So now we're going to start blending and I wanted to blend in a little bit of the cow girl coral to the fire starter. So I took my misting bottle and that is really key for blending is you want a really good misting bottle and you just spray a bunch of water on there and then start blending in with the color. So I didn't want to take away the total brightness of the body, but I just wanted to add just a little depth to it. So I just kept on misting. Uh, I actually had quite a bit of water on here at one point. So I did put a paper towel underneath and I just let that uh, color, the cowgirl coral, drip down and just add a lot of dimension and depth to the body. After that, I took my heat gun and I did dry it a little bit just to make sure that some of that drippiness stayed in place and it wasn't too wet. And then I moved on to the next one. And again, I did the exact same thing. I just went ahead and misted it, brought in a little bit of the cowgirl coral, uh, added more water, blended, uh, and I am really loving how this is all coming together. Next up, I want to add just a little bit of dimension to the spirals. So I took Farm Fresh, just a tiny little bit. I sprayed the entire swirly thing and I added just a little bit of Farm Fresh and I started blending. Again, I didn't want to totally take away that mint chip. I just wanted to add uh, just a tad of color uh, just to make it look like it was a real snail. So next, I decided to work on the actual body of the snail and his little eye. And I went in with Bohemian Blue. The one thing to know about Bohemian Blue is that there is a lot of pigment in this. All the DIY paints are heavily pigmented, 
but I feel like the Bohemian Blue, when you're blending, you do not need a lot. And I added a whole lot more water on here. As you can see, as I'm doing this, I just continue to mist it. I move it back and forth with the water. I add a little bit to the eye and I just start blending everywhere. Now, it did go on to the orange a little bit. And at first I was really concerned about this, like, oh, Oh boy, now I'm, you know, mixing uh, the blue into the orange. But then I realized, you know what, let's work with this. And I just thought, you know, it's all natural and whatever happens, happens. Uh, so I just kept on working with it and chose to embrace where it was going. So I decided to take a little bit of the Bohemian Blue and put it on my paintbrush and splatter it all over. I decided that uh, I wanted a little bit of the splattering on the mint chip. I wanted it on the body of the uh, snail. And I really love how this all turned out. The one thing I can recommend is when you do this with the paint or the, the toothbrush like this, uh, be very careful. It ended up getting everywhere. So maybe I had a recommendation from a viewer to maybe put it in a box and do it. Uh, that will prevent a lot of splatter going everywhere. So now that they're completely dry, I am taking Big Top and I am going to seal it. I just add a lot of Big Top to my brush. I don't want to, um, because DIY paint can be reactivated, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on this. I want to just with a really light hand uh, apply the Big Top and that way it doesn't smear that splatter look that I had on here. And oh guys, I just love how these turned out. Uh, they are my favorite. I am definitely going to get those in my gardens as soon as all the snow melts. Uh, but this really had me feel in spring. Here's just another angle and how I very lightly go in. Uh, I just hear so often that when people apply a top coat that they smear uh, the paint or it pulls back and it's because you're um, going in with your top coat too heavy. So that is the key for that and the nice thing too is with the new DIY paintbrushes that Debbie came out with and will be available to ship. I'm going to be shipping them hopefully fingers crossed this week. Uh, there is one called the feather and it will be perfect for applying the second coat of paint or the top coat. So I am very excited to get those out but I wanted just to say um, it helps you have a very light hand when applying the top coats. For this next project, if you guys have been following along over on Facebook, I do a live every Monday and Wednesday. During my live last week, I took uh, several different picture frames and I upcycled them. So that picture frame, I mixed 50% mint chip, 50% farm fresh to create like a robin egg blue. I painted the frame and then wet distressed it to bring back that green. I knew that I wanted to use decoupage paper inside. I just didn't know which one at the time. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to just finish this project that I started over on my live. Uh, it, the picture frame did have like a piece of cardboard in it. So I painted the cardboard white. Anytime you're using decoupage paper, by starting with a white base, it really makes your paper pop. 
So I am using Bird Ephemeral by Roycycled, and this is one of my favorites. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I love it. So I'm just cutting out a little chunk, and I still have the opportunity to use the rest of the paper on another project. One of my favorite mediums to use to apply the decoupage paper is the liquid patina from DIY. Now, when I'm applying any type of decoupage paper, I like to work in sections. This gives you a lot more control over your paper and helps you prevent any wrinkles or tears. So I start with a, like a starter strip of liquid patina on top. I just make sure that it's nice and evenly applied and then then I push down the paper and then I smooth it out with the actual paintbrush and I just keep rubbing back and forth try to eliminate as many of the wrinkles as possible and work my way down once I get that section all smoothed out I lift it back up and then I continue to work in sections all the way down the entire project now that it's completely dry, all I need to do is put this right back into the frame. And what a simple way to transform something that somebody else tossed aside. A little paint and a little paper, and this project was completely transformed. All the products that I'm in, using in today's video, you can find over on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. For project three, we are flipping this frame. On last week's live, I was planning on getting to this as well. Unfortunately, my lives are an hour. I try to really hold to that, so I didn't get to this. But I did poll my viewers and I asked them, what color would you paint this frame? I ended up getting an overall uh, black was the color. So we're going in today with the color black to really make this beautiful cross stitch pop. I love rescuing items that are tossed to the wayside and I think by painting this frame black it will just give that cross stitch new life. I'm going in with just one coat of Little Black Dress from DIY. I do want to bring back just a little bit of that wood undertone. So I am going to let this one coat dry very thoroughly and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna wet distress it just to bring back some of that detail of the frame and make that wood pop through. If you haven't wet distressed before, it's really as simple as having a damp rag, not super saturated, but just enough, and to take that and just rub here and there to make the details of your project pop. After that, I'm going in with Big Top, sealing the entire piece, and really that's as simple as this project was to transform the entire look of your thrifted item. Sometimes you don't need to do a lot to make something just new and refreshed. It's just a little paint. For this next project, I was actually going to kibosh this and not include it, but I definitely wanted to show you um, what happened here. So I thrifted this plate. I ended up getting it, I think, for like 99 cents. I thought it was super cute. My vision here was to take the new stamp set called Birds and Bees from IOD, and I wanted to use this one bird and stamp it on here. Um, in 
the end, I thought that the bird after I stamped it was too big. And even though the IOD ink is permanent, if you do wipe it off fast enough, you can start with a fresh slate. Uh, so what I'm doing here is actually I show you how I stamp this. Now I do use a thin mount and I have a couple thin mounts in um, my I, in my all my supplies I like to have a big one but then I do take others and just chop them into smaller um, sections so that I can use them on stamps and I love the gridded background and I like how thick it is as well uh, the stamps do come with a clear backing on each of them but that is a little thinner and the thin mount is thicker that it just makes it all the easier to stamp with so I am going in with that permanent ink like I said. I ink up that bird really well and the key here you can use this uh, these stamps on any project whether it be this plate. Um, once it is uh, uh, actually stamped on the plate and you heat set it it's permanent. So here I am going in and I am going to stamp this. I lay it down and basically I hold it in place and I rub very gently all over the bird. And this is where I am thinking, gosh, maybe I shouldn't have did this because I think it's too big. So I lift it up and I just think the bird was too big for this whole project. So I wiped it off and I just want to show you what I did here. I stamped a B on here and then I used uh, some twigs from another stamp to add a little bit more black to it. What do you guys think? Should I left the bird or do you like how I use the B and the twigs? Let me know in the comments. For this next project, I did recently thrift this and I'm sure I am going to get a lot of comments that I should not be painting it. But the lid was gone. I did a little research on this and yes, with the lid and the markings, it would go for roughly 40 some dollars uh, if I resold it as is. But I decided I was going to add a mold to this and do a little bit of upcycling. So I am applying one even coat of White Swan to the entire piece. I'm going to let this dry very thoroughly and then we're going to apply a mold. And I'm super excited uh, because I get to use the new IOD mold called Hidden Hollow. For starters, I am using the air dry clay from IOD and then the Hidden Hollow mold and I decided to use the mold on the right side. So the door on the right side, I liked how uh, the top almost came to like an arch. Anytime I'm using the molds, I always use cornstarch. It just helps the air dry clay release a little bit easier. And I'm just working the clay into, um, I'm just taking a chunk of it and flattening it out. Uh, the clay is so easy to use. I just put it in there, I smoosh it down, and then I just take my thumb and remove any excess. It's really that easy. After I'm totally done, I am then going to have gravity help me with this. I flip it over and then let gravity do its work and it comes right out. Next, I'm using Type Bonds Quick and Thick, and this is my favorite glue to use with the air dry clay. I just spread a little bit on it. You, The key here is you want enough, but not too much. And what I do is I apply it to the center, then take my finger and just rub all the way over and just bring enough to the edges. You just don't want to set it down and it oozing out. It just 
creates a huge mess. So definitely less is more to start off with. You can always add if you need to. After that, I'm going to just flip it over, figure out where I want it on my piece, set it down, and then very gently, what I do here is I start working on the edges and just make sure that the edges are all secured down. Uh, and then I go into the center and just make sure uh, the whole piece is got nice adhesion. I just don't want to put too much pressure on here and eliminate any of that beautiful detail. That's one thing I love about the IOD molds is the amazing detail each of them have. Now I did let this dry overnight and that's the other key is anytime you're working with the molds, always let them dry because if you start painting them or applying any wax after that, it just can get rid of some of that detail. So I let this dry overnight. I did apply a second coat of paint, which I did not show on a, the video, but now I'm going in with a damp rig and I want to bring out all the beautiful detail of this old teapot. And that's one reason why I grabbed this right away is because it was so beautiful, but you couldn't see it because it was all tarnished. And this way with the white paint and wet distressing, it brings back all that amazing detail. Next, before I do anything else, I do want to seal it. I am sealing it with Big Top and just applying one even coat. Now, on a previous video where I worked with some silver, I added some clay pieces as well. Some of the feedback that I received was, I think you should have added a wax, like a dark wax to it, the, the actual clay, to really make it pop even more. And that's what we're gonna do here. But anytime I'm working with any colored waxes, I do want to seal that piece. That way I can work with the dark wax or the white wax a little bit easier. Now that it's completely dry, I'm taking my waxing brush and black wax, and I'm going to start waxing this piece. And I am starting with the door first, and I am just applying a liberal amount all over the door. And then I am going to take a paper towel and wipe away the excess. Initially, my vision was I was just going to do the door, and then I realized that the rest of the pot was a little bit bright compared to the door. So I added just a little bit of dark wax or actually, I'm sorry, black wax to the rest of the piece. And I think that it really tied it all together. For my final project, if you watched my last video, my thrift haul, I had quite a few viewers say that they actually picked this up where I thrifted it and they chose not to grab it, but I knew right away I had a vision in my head what I wanted to do. I unfortunately am covering up these beautiful uh, lighthouses and I'm sure some people are cringing, but my vision here is a little different. So we're going to use a piece of recycled paper uh, called hardware and to go in I am applying two coats of white swan to just the um, base of this and then we're going to go back and apply the decoupage paper and wait till you see this transformation guys. So here is the piece completely dried. I just wanna show you what it looks like, the spar, and then here is the paper called hardware. And I am going to use just the bottom portion of it. So I can still use the top piece like on another sign or somewhere, uh, but what I do is I just kinda lay it out. I make sure everything lines up 
And then what I do is I just take my fingernail and I kind of rub where the edge is. And then I'm just going to cut it as straight as possible. Now that I have it all cut, I laid it down and oh my gosh, I am knowing at this point that I made the best decision to go with this decoupage paper and does it not totally transform this piece? I honestly am in love. So again, we're going in with liquid patina from DIY and I just start on one side and I work my way over and this really helps, like I said in the previous um, project, just really helps eliminate the wrinkles and have better control over your paper. And um, I work from one side all the way to the other. Once it's dry, this piece is completely transformed. And honestly, it's as simple as a little liquid patina and a piece of decoupage paper and your item is completely transformed. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some inspiration to start flipping some of your own pieces. I have so much fun creating thrift to treasure videos. Well, I have so much fun thrifting and then flipping. So um, I can't wait to hear what your favorite item was. Honestly, I am so excited that I did grab that barn board shelf and just with a little bit of decoupage paper, it totally transformed the look of that piece. Uh, that will be available at Antique Acres. So if you guys have been following along, you'll know that I am going to be a vendor at Antique Acres in May. So that's May 19th and 20th. And as I'm picking items and uh, flipping them or just picking them to have them available, I cannot wait to show you my booth and bring you guys along for that. Uh, that is such an amazing event. Uh, the vendors that are partaking in it, uh, they just go all out, you guys. So if you are local, mark it on your calendar, and I sure hope I get to see you there. Now, Friday's video, I am probably going to just keep on going on with the flipping. Um, I have a ton of items. Do I really need to thrift at this point? Probably not. I might go possibly this week. We'll see. But Friday, I'm definitely going to be doing another flipping video. So be watching for that. And I'm just going to pick five more items or seven more items. Whatever I get done will be in that video. So we will see you Friday and you guys have yourselves a great week. Bye.